Interesting stories. Interesting people. Welcome to the Humble Badger Podcast. Thank you for listening to this podcast today. Remember to like and follow us at The Humble Badger on Twitter and Facebook or at The Humble Badger Podcast on Instagram. This episode is brought to you with the help of our promotional partners at Mississauga Music. You can find out more at mississaugamusic.com. My name is Pablo Dawson, and I am your host for this episode. And as you know, we like to start with random facts. And right now, I'll give you a random fact about something about all of us. Uh, apparently, I just found out that your bones are comprised of 31% water. I actually thought it was a higher rate, but maybe I'm off. Uh, maybe it's just because my bones are brittle. I'm not really sure. But uh, this is the uh, fact that was thrown at me, and so I'm reporting it to you. We're going to find out more about uh, the human anatomy today, um, but not in the way that you think, because this is a podcast after all. I'd like to know what my co-host thinks about bones and the fact that they contribute uh only they only have 30 31 percent water in them I, I wow no no thoughts on that to no be thoughts, honest really i'm your co-host today the identity crisis rapper singer producer filmmaker and i have a uh i have a fun fact that i would like to state okay it has nothing to do with anatomy though is that okay yeah I guess. all right every single month believe it or not every single month has 28 days that is true that is true Correct. The answer is correct. And here to chime in on the 31% water in the bones or the fact that every month has 28 days is our guest for this episode. Please introduce yourself. Hello, listeners. This is Abhiti. I'm the artistic avatar of Dr. Amita Mundinshara, physician by day, artist by night, and trying to bring positivity to the world why the messages I put either through medicine or through my artwork as a singer, dancer, actor, TV host, and radio show host. Wow. So you do a lot of things. You seem to have a lot of expertise. So I definitely want to know. Expertise. Is this, <laughs> is this 31% figure accurate for the bones in the human body? I would say yes. And you is. say that as a doctor or as a radio host? As a doctor. Okay. All right. Okay. I just want to be clear. <laughs> Very what about the month has 28 days? Hmm, I might have to go back to school on that. You see, I only took up the sciences. And, uh, I was not very good in the math. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Abhiti, is, uh, obviously you have a number of things that you do. Um, you're, you're a very uh, talented person. Uh, do all kinds of things in the field of entertainment. Uh, by the way, you can find out more at abhiti.ca. Please tell us, first of all, how did you come up with that name? That name means fearlessness. In the Indian language. So, uh, which Indian language? <laughs> so in Hindi and Sanskrit. Okay, because oh. I was going to say, because as you know, uh, there is no such thing as an Indian That's language. Because, you know, I, I don't know, like people have heard it before. Do you speak Indian? It's like, do you speak European? Because <laughs> I don't speak Indian. <laughs> so. Maybe I don't speak Indian. Yeah. <laughs> I speak global. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, no, because uh, people have asked that uh, before about, you know, the, the Indian language. Or like when people think Africa is a country. You know, oh, yeah. it's that kind of thing. So that's why I just want to clarify which Indian language it is. <laughs> of all of the things that you do, mm -hmm. which one do you enjoy the most? Singing. Absolutely mm. singing. Mm. Because it gives me the freedom to actually put out what's within mm -hmm. in terms of what I write and sing. Mm -hmm. And it also actually you can add on other aspects to singing, whether it's a live performance or if you record something. Mm -hmm. Because... With singing comes a performance aspect, and that's where I want to create my niche, a performance artist in the fusion category. Mm -hmm. And when I say fusion, it's where the East Indian sounds meet the Western sounds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So right that's, yeah, that's where I'm targeting. And my goal this year is to focus on original music. Up okay. until last year, I was focusing a lot on cover, mm -hmm. but starting to uh, do original music. And I'm actually looking forward to release two this year. Oh, okay. yes. Oh, and yeah. one of them by none other than the very talented, produced by the very talented Identity Crisis. I, I had a pleasure working with you on, on that one track in particular. Um, is this the one about the bus? 
It is about the bus. It's, it's yeah. the short bus. Yes. Yeah. The short. Let's, <laughs> now, uh, let's talk about, um, you're talking about fusion and that thing. Um, let's talk about your musical influences. Who do you look up to and who inspires you? Right now, I look up to two particular performers, singers, Beyonce and J-Lo. Wow. Yeah. The reason being, once again, the key word being performance. Right. I love the fact that they're not just able to sing, mm. but when they come on stage, they light up. Oh, yeah. Because they're a full-on performer. Right. And that's why I look up to them. It's not necessarily about all their songs, but mm -hmm. it's their whole persona and their brand. So that is my most recent influence, and that's the direction I'm taking. But as I grew up, my influence was mostly Bollywood music from right. East India. Mm -hmm. And after moving to Canada, when I started, uh, that's the great part about Canada, different cultures, the fusion. Mm -hmm. I really started, uh, you know, taking a liking to the fact that we can actually bring different genres of music together. Right. And that's where the fusion aspect comes in. But the performance aspect comes from somebody <coughs> like uh, J-Lo and Beyonce. Right. And those are my influences. Mm -hmm. Those are not bad templates to yeah, have. Exactly, right? so. Yeah, exactly. And it's especially in terms of branding and in terms of performance, as you said. Um, you're also very good at branding. You um, definitely take it seriously, uh, a lot of the stuff that you do. You could find out more if you actually visit abiti.ca. You will see uh, exactly what I'm talking about. What advice would you give to artists that are starting out who might be intimidated by uh, sort of the social media landscape? What would you say to them? What kind of advice from someone who has successfully done that? I would say stay original. Mm -hmm. Definitely draw influences from others, but create your own niche mm -hmm. or your own way. And take it slow and steady. It's not about uh, getting to where you want to be at the fastest rate possible. It's the journey. Experience the journey. Mm -hmm. And also along the way, just think about whether that's still the destination you want to get to because things may change life happens example for me uh, i started out as a physician i actually went out through a uh, went through a burnout depressive phase mm -hmm. and that's when the arts saved me so things can change along the way keep the destination keep it original do it slow and steady mm. yeah. okay that's it's very definitely good a mar marathon not a sprint right yeah exactly i think a lot of people don't understand that so I, yeah, I think that can be applied to life in general. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And uh, like you said, with the end goal sometimes changing along the way, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right? not. And who says what's right, what's wrong? Right. Mm -hmm. You can take advice from others, but listen to what's within your heart. That's very, very sage. <laughs> <laughs> As for fusion, I mean, I love Canadian fusion in terms of food, for sure. Oh, yes. But you could probably tell that looking at my figure. Oh, come on. Yeah, but still, no, I love it. I love it. And coming from a mixed family, uh, I definitely get to experience a lot of different kinds of fusion in terms of food. But this is not about my dinner. This is about... <laughs> uh, but speaking of food, uh, what kind of food do you enjoy? And what does Amita like to do for fun? A uh, food. I love raw food. Raw food. Raw vegan food. I'm not a lot ah. into cooking, so please don't visit me at home, but I would love to take you <laughs> out somewhere. <laughs> if you like carrots and uh, maybe some cauliflower, you can uh, go to dinner at her place, but otherwise... Maybe so you... I'll grow it in my garden one day. Yeah. <laughs> and what do I like to do for fun? Yeah. Uh, number one thing, spend time with my dog. Oh. At the end of a busy day, that's what I love to do. Just, you know, cozy up with him. Listen to some music right. as I am getting inspired to do my own music. But spending time with my dog is my number one fun thing. And what kind of dog do you have? I have a Maltese and Malt. he's 10. Okay. Mm. And he he's like me, a quiet uh, fellow. I'm quiet at the end of the day. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, you don't strike <laughs> me as quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I think anyone who's met you would know that, uh, that that would be a very uh, surprising thing for them. But just like how people react when I say that I'm shy. <laughs> yeah. I am. What do you think is the biggest misconception about you, Paul? Biggest mis misconception? Um, man, I don't know. I don't ask people what, what they think about yeah. me. I probably should do that. Yeah, Paul doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you don't have to ask, yeah. right? Like I said, listen to your heart. Listen to your heart. I don't know if I'm listening to my heart because it's constantly telling me to get tacos. So yeah, it's like, I know. Um, oh, my heart's the, doing the same thing. I, think I don't know if that, we should get Amita tacos. Mode has to kick in right now. That's, I, I don't know if tacos are necessarily vegan, though. Like that's the thing. Um, they are. They can be. They can be. They can, they can be. be. I suppose. They can be. 
You can give me extra meat. We'll go with that. Uh, yeah. So you're a physician. I know that you obviously do to things like patient confidentiality. You can't reveal anything too specific. But generally speaking, what do you think? Speaking of misconceptions, what do you think um, the biggest misconception the general public has of physicians? They make a lot of money. Wait, you don't? <laughs> uh, yeah, that is a number one misconception. It's uh, uh, and as a result, uh, they believe that we push a lot of medications. Right. I mean, yeah, that could be the case years ago, but it's not no longer the case. Mm -hmm. I myself uh, try to push more towards natural methods of healing from within, mm -hmm. and medications have a place. And uh, na you should go more with the natural ways of healing, but because people think we push medications, they think we make a lot of money mm -hmm. right. through the pharmaceutical companies. Right. So I think that's the number one misconception. And just so we're clear, you don't. I <laughs> don't. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the Maserati sitting in the right. driveway that, begs to differ. Hers. That's not <laughs> That belongs to the Badger. Um, <laughs> so humble. <laughs> yeah, so humble. Yeah, we're driving in a Maserati. Yeah, that's, that's the right image. <laughs> I think it's time for rapid fire. What do you think? I think so. Okay, let's get it. Do you know how to play this? Hmm, I think so. So basically, we're going to ask you questions. You're going to say the first thing that pops to your head. Hopefully, it's not too offensive. And uh, then we will ask you the next one. Now, you are welcome to pass, but you got the, the point here is to be quick. Got it. All right, you ready? I hope so. Have you ever worn socks with sandals at the same time? Yes, I have. Ooh. Oh my god, that's terrible. Summer. Oh my god. <laughs> I have I, I can certainly say I've never done that. I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> um would you rather cuddle with a baby panda or a baby penguin? <laughs> baby panda, I like the fur. Oh. You like the witch? Fur. Oh, the fur. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I I was hoping this question was: Would you rather eat a baby panda no, or a baby penguin? Vegan. You know, because I definitely would probably go for the penguin. I would like to say because it probably tastes more like chicken because it's also a bird. Have you ever had Panda Express? No. Oh. I wait. Yes, I have Panda Express. <laughs> there you go. That is Panda, I believe. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're not getting a sponsorship from Panda <laughs> Express, are we? <laughs> is double dipping at a party ever acceptable? No, Jones. No, yeah. absolutely not. Absolutely not. What is the fastest speed you've ever driven in a car? That's right. 150. <gasps> 150? Is that miles or kilometers? <clears throat> kilometers per hour. Okay, well, that's not that fast. That's her Maserati, remember. Yeah, that's. Her, I guess she, she wants to keep it at a decent uh, decent rate. <laughs> um, what would you rather have, invisibility or super strength? Invisibility, I could be naughty. Oh, you got you. Yeah, I wish this was a video podcast. You had to see your face for that. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> not sure where to go from there but <laughs> okay now this is a question i think about the actual food and not about you dark chocolate or milk chocolate dark chocolate mm. <laughs> <laughs> dark chocolate yes i agree with you i prefer dark chocolate myself you inspire me Pablo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay so um we'll now get to the trivia portion uh so again the idea is not to show off how much you know uh but it's for an opportunity for everybody to learn something um, and of course, we are at the uh, mercy of the internet. So let's see what happens here. Uh, Anatomy 101, human body quiz. This is what I've uh, called up uh -uh. here. Uh, <laughs> let's see what uh, let's see what happens. Okay. Um... <laughs> My pulse is racing. Yeah. <laughs> let's just stick to these trivia about the human body. Okay. So, what is heavier, your bones? Or concrete? Bones. You got really? that right. Yeah, bones <laughs> wow. are apparently more heavier than concrete. That's... Well done. It's good that she knows this being a doctor and all. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, how much does the average human brain weigh? Whoa. Don't know that. Three grams. Three grams? <laughs> Maybe some people's brains. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like close to probably 15 pounds. -ish. You remember when uh, Jerry Maguire, that uh, that kid, uh, then he grew up and he became a UFC fighter. I don't remember his name. Jonathan Lipnicki or something. Mm. You know, anyways, he would, that, that big, very cute scene. Jerry Maguire is a movie from 1996 for all you kids listening that stars 
this guy named Tom Cruise, who was once a movie star. Um, hey, and, well, it's she's true. She's last couple movies. Hey, well, Top, Gun, <laughs> Top Gun is going to blow the roof off. Of yes. The, uh, Top watch. Gun 2. Yeah. Just yes. watch. <laughs> she becomes a commercial airline pilot for American Airlines. That's, uh, I don't know where that's going. Anyways, we've gotten off topic. Hold on, brain. But the point brain. is, yeah, yeah, but yeah, the, the brain, brain thing, the kid says in the movie that the human head weighs 10 pounds or something like that. And apparently the average human brain weighs about three pounds. Oh. Three oh, pounds. Okay. So, okay. so glad I'm not a neurosurgeon. That's right. <laughs> but you said, you, you she mentioned said three grams. grams, which was scary to me. I'd like to know exactly how dumb are your patients? Right? No, I'm I'm kidding. I'm sure they're all I very guess, fabulous people. I guess doing a lot of counseling these days. That's, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they mean by shrinking your head, right? Oh, uh -huh. look at that. Like that. Yes, I'm on all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all the time we have. Um, I would like to thank Amitha Mundanchera for uh, coming on. You can follow her at The Real Abithi uh, on Instagram, on Twitter. Uh, she's on Facebook. You can find out more at abithi.ca. That's A B H I T H I.ca. I'd like to also thank my co-host, Paul Castro, a.k.a. The Identity Crisis. Thank you for having me, sir. Thank you. And we would like to thank our promotional sponsors at Mississauga Music. Visit them at mississaugamusic.com, especially if you're an artist from the Mississauga area. If your organization is interested in sponsorship or promotional partnerships, please contact us. For any inquiries from anyone, please visit thehumblebadger.com for contact information or send us a message through social media. Thank you for tuning in. Signing off from the set here at Tracks Ahead Recording Studio, my name is Pablo Dawson. Wherever you are and whatever you do, remember to follow your passion. Thank you for tuning in to the Humble Badger podcast. For more information, please visit thehumblebadger.com. The Humble Badger podcast is produced by the Pablo Dawson Company. Context matters. See you next time.